Welcome to lesson 6. We will start talking about divide and conquer, which is a very general approach in designing algorithms. We will cover some parts from chapter 5, but um, in different order, and we will also cover some parts out of the textbook, so I will be giving you appropriate pointers as we go. The general idea of divide and conquer is very simple. I give you a problem and you split it up into several parts. How many? It depends on the problem. You solve each of those sub-problems recursively. And then you have to combine the solutions of those sub-problems somehow into the solution of uh, the original problem I gave you. So if you think about this recursively, if I give you a problem of size n, for example, how to sort the numbers, you split it into some sub-problems, let's say in this case just two sub-problems of size n over 2, and you recursively solve these two sub-problems. If uh, n is uh, very small, for example just two numbers, you can do this trivially without any recursion. You can just, say, compare two numbers. But if n is larger than that, then you continue the recursion at each level splitting uh, the problem into um, smaller problems of um, a certain size. For instance, here it could be n over 4, n over 4, n over 4, and n over 4. At each level of the recursion, after you have these uh, solutions for the sub-problem, as you go up the recursion, you have to combine those solutions to get the solution of the problem at the higher level of the recursion. An important point about divide and conquer is that it only makes sense if this process of breaking the problem into smaller parts and solving them recursively and then combining the solutions takes less time than solving the original problem. For instance, if I give you the problem of finding the maximum of n numbers, you don't gain anything by splitting these numbers into two parts, finding the maximum in each of these two sub-arrays, um, and then combining the solution. We will spend some time not only designing divide and conquer algorithms, but also analyzing the running time so that we can figure out if the algorithm has a runtime complexity of, say, big O and log n or something else. So let me introduce you to some of the notation that we will have. Um, suppose that I give you a problem of size n and t of n will represent from now on the time it takes for your algorithm to solve this problem when the input size is n. Now, you can write that t of n is equal to how many problems, sub-problems, you have to solve. Let's say that we designed an algorithm in which we split the original problem into alpha sub-problems, where alpha is greater or equal than 1. Each of those sub-problems will have a certain size. Let's say that the size of each of these sub-problems is n divided by beta, where beta is larger than 1, so that we actually reduce the input size of the sub-problems. So we're solving alpha sub-problems, each of them with input size n over beta. Remember, though, we also have to do some work to combine the solutions of those alpha sub-problems. Let's uh, denote that as C of n, combine. n meaning again that this is the work that we do to combine these sub-problems of size n over beta to a solution of the problem that has input size n. Now, this is a recursive equation because we have T of n both here and here. Of course, we can only solve it if we also have a base case, some initial case. For instance, it may be that when n is equal to 2, we know how to solve this problem with some constant time, let's call it k. 
So this recursive equation in that case would be applicable only for n greater than 2. Now, in some cases, we will not actually write exactly what is the time to combine the solutions. We may write something like this. So this is not so accurate. It's basically telling you that the time to combine the solutions is upper bounded asymptotically by some function C prime of n. So sometimes we will be using this notation. Additionally, sometimes we will not have an equality here. Sometimes we will have an inequality, meaning that this is upper, just an upper bound of the running time for an input size of problem n. Of course, we will try to have upper bounds that are tight. So let me just give you some examples of the kind of recursive equations we will see later and their asymptotic running time bound. Of course, I'm not going to prove anything now. I'm just giving you a preview of uh, the, the kinds of equations we will see later. So uh, we will see a recursion in which you start with a problem of size n and you split it only into one problem, so alpha is equal to 1, of size n over 2, plus some constant work. Another way that you could write this would be t of n is equal to t of n over 2 plus big O of 1. This uh, means that this is a constant time operation. So we will see that for um, this recursion, we will prove that t of n is big O log n, that it increases um, logarithmically. We will see another very common recursion in which you split the problem into two problems, each of them of size n over 2, and then you do some work which is proportional to n. k again here is a constant, remember. Um, so for this uh, recursion, you could have also written that t of n is 2 t of n over 2 plus big O of n, because we have linear time to combine the solutions. And we will prove later that t of n is, um, in this case, big O n log n. Let me give you just one more. We will also see recursions in which you split your problem into, let's say, q subproblems. This is q, not 9, okay? Um, of, let's say, size n over 2. And uh, you, again, take some linear time to combine the solutions where this q is larger than uh, 2. In that case, we will show that the running time of this uh, type of divide and conquer algorithms is big O n to the log base 2 of q. So we will see algorithms that uh, follow this type of recursions and we will also prove these uh, solutions of the recursions in the next few lessons.